HCP just released their Invertig 251 ACDC, and I'm excited to show it to you today. There's a lot of advanced tech that's baked in here, and I'm gonna unpack a lot of that throughout this video, but just to give you a preview of some of the new features, it has double pulse, which combines a high-speed and low-speed pulse to give you added control on DC. It has a fast tack feature with a specially engineered pulse to actually draw your material together. I've used this on a couple of projects, and I gotta tell you, it works really good. A new feature called dynamic power will actually vary your amperage based on your arc length, so you get some extra stability and an added level of control if you don't have a foot pedal available. Now on the AC side, there are a ton of ways that you can fine tune your waveform and your arc to the task at hand and it has different waveforms you can choose between and you can even mix and match them on the positive and negative side of the cycle and then control their amplitudes independently of one another. So there's a lot you can do with that. What hasn't changed is the quality and performance that the Invertig lineup has had a reputation for over many years. So I've been using the Invertig 221 for about three years and I gotta tell you, it is top-notch performer. It's not my only TIG welder in the shop here. I actually have five but it uh, is the one that I go to on and off camera. And even though HTP is a sponsor of the channel for some videos, most of the time when I use it, it's just because I really like the machine and I believe in the products that they have. Now the 251 is made in Italy by the same manufacturer as the rest of the Invertig lineup. And it's supported in the US by HTP in Chicago. I wasn't really familiar with HDP until a few years ago when I started using their equipment. So let me give you a little background on them. It stands for High Technology Products. And for over 40 years, they've been sourcing high quality welding equipment and putting together packages with high quality accessories and selling them directly to the consumer. Now by operating this way, they're able to sell this equipment at a much lower price than some of the brands that you'd buy at a welding supply store. However, the performance and quality is definitely on par with those brands. So what they aren't is the low cost provider. So if you're looking for the cheapest option out there, you might as well move on, but if you're looking for a top tier machine at a really good value that's supported and someone will answer the phone when you have a question or a problem and they're personally see to it that it's resolved, this is the place to look. Let's dig into the machine and we'll start by looking at the package here. This is their dual voltage air cooled package and they're well known for how good the accessories are, right? So if you look at the work clamp here, this thing's a beast as it always is. And even better than that is the lead. It's the flexible, real welding lead, good quality stuff. It has the super flex cable on the TIG torch, which makes it easier to handle and comes with the heavy hitters 26 series torch. Now this is a bit larger torch and I've used one of these for a little over a year on the Revolution 2500. And I'll tell you for an air cooled torch, this can really handle some amperage without overheating. You can also use it with a water cooler and they have a port on the back. You can plug the water cooler directly in. So, so that's an option as well. Now the foot pedal here, it's a good design. I like this style. This is pretty typical of what you'll find on most machines, but it's a good quality one and works well. So before we get into all of these features, it's a lot. There is a ton in this welding machine, more than I can even cover in this video, and it might feel like a fire hose at times. But more than any of the advanced features that we're gonna talk about, what I like about this machine is how well it works. It's just simple to use. The user interface walks you through step-by-step step everything you need to know. So it's intuitive. You don't have to have some degree in rocket science to be able to handle the thing. Anybody can learn to run this machine. And that's what I like about it. Between that and just the overall performance and how smooth it is, that, that's what makes it a real favorite of mine already. So with that, let's go ahead and get into some of this cool stuff. So the first thing, and this is my favorite advanced feature so far, the most useful and productive, it's fast tack. So I'm not controlling this amperage with my foot pedal. I have it set to a profile and you may be able to hear a pulse that happens and it's a specially engineered pulse that draws the metal together. And so it makes these consistent, repeatable tack welds that are the same every time and you have minimal heat input. And the less heat that goes into your tack, the less it's gonna pull and the straighter that your part will be when you go to weld it out. So that's always a plus. Here I'm on some 16 gauge stainless steel and outside corner joint. 
I mean, this is a pretty common joint for making pans or, you know, kitchen stainless work. And you can see that it's coming out just exactly the same every single time, nice and clean. Now, if you look under the hood, it's hard to even see when it happens because it's so fast. But uh, it, it works. You just point and shoot over and over again, and they come out nice and consistent. So that's definitely a favorite feature of mine so far. Let's take a look at double pulse. So you can see this flashing as the amperage changes along your weld. And right here I'm running an autogenous uh, outside corner joint, but there's more going on than what you can see. So when you run pulse welding, it switches between a high and a low amperage. Now what I've drawn out here is a little diagram. This is time, so from here to here is one second. And then up here is just your amperage. So you can run pulse welding slow like this, and so it'll go high and then back low, and every second it'll go high and low, and that can help kind of pace progression. The other way you can use it is with a fast pulse, and so it goes high and low many times per second. I mean, this can go up to like a thousand pulses per second, but usually you're sitting somewhere between 30 and maybe 240, and uh, that just narrows your arc cone up and it can help limit heat input. Now double pulse puts those two together right here, and so it runs this fast pulse which narrows up your arc cone and reduces heat input along with a low frequency pulse where that whole thing goes up and down, and that can help pace progression, and it's a really cool feature. Let me show you how I used that to put together a little stainless steel tray that I was working on. This is a stainless steel water pan, and I wanted to put the two halves together, and I thought it'd be a good chance to try out double pulse because it's relatively thin material and I'll be running an edge weld autogenously or without any filler. So I started off with a pulse, at least on the low speed pulse, about one per second. And then on the high speed, I'm running 120 hertz and uh, you know just my typical settings. And so it progressed along pretty well and it, it was working all right, but I felt like I was putting a little too much heat into the material based on the color afterwards. So I turned up that low speed pulse to about two and a half or three pulses per second. And then I was traveling faster just naturally. It pushed the puddle along and you can see how clean those came out uh, on those stainless steel edge welds. And it, it was nearly effortless to do that. I mean, it, it worked really well. I was uh, really happy with that. Here I'm just running this uh, outside corner joint on some 16 gauge so we can see the result of that. And this uh, flashing, I mean, you, you may like it, you may not, but uh, that's just the, the nature of the process. As you work your way along under the hood, it's really not, uh, not too bad in my opinion. But either way, it puts a little bit of a rippled effect, it helps pace progression, and you have that tight arc cone from the high frequency pulse. And here at the end, I probably could have stood to have a little bit more post flow, but if you look at the rest of the joint, I mean, that is pretty clean if you ask me. So, uh, you know, I think there's definitely use for this feature. Now let me show you something I have never seen before. So this is dynamic power and watch when I raise my arc length up. I'm not suggesting that you go that far with it, but notice the puddle actually got smaller and it's putting in less heat. Let me show you a little picture of how dynamic power works. So normally with TIG welding, you're running a constant current power supply. So when you go from a short arc length, when everything's in good control to a long arc length, it really spreads out your arc right here and it can make it more difficult to control and it increases the overall amount of heat that goes in because your voltage went up. With dynamic power, it senses that arc length by reading the voltage off your torch and so when you go from a short arc length to a longer one, it actually reduces the amount of heat that goes in and you can control how much it does that. So I'll just demonstrate that here. I have it set with a live lift start and this is called lift pipe smart mode, but basically it's a lift arc that is live with no pedal at all and it runs the gas solenoid so that uh, you know everything can be done without any control. So that's possibly where you might use this. So I'm going to weld along here and I'll vary my arc length and I'm gonna exaggerate this a little bit. So I'm not suggesting that you weld exactly like this, but I want to really demonstrate the point of how this works. So let's take a look at the arc and the machine panel so you can see what happens with your amperage. So when I strike an arc, I light up here, 
I can let my puddle form and I'm on eighth inch thick steel running about 110 amps, which is, you know, about right for something like this. But when I raise up there, notice it drops down around 90 amps. And then when I come back close, it increases again. So this uh, could be a really useful feature. I'm not sure that this is one that I'm gonna use all the time because most of the work I do, I have a foot pedal at the bench, but I can really see cases where you may want to use this just to give you a little extra control if you aren't able to have that and compensate for your arc length or to actually control your amperage a little bit uh, by varying your arc length. So it's something to play with. This is new to me and I, I'm definitely not an expert on how to use it, but uh, I, I do think it is pretty cool, something that they, they really thought through here on the machine. Something that's really nice to control easily is the minimum amp. So you can turn this clear down to a one amp setting and that sets the floor on your foot pedal. So you can see down below that one amp is where your pedal's at, even though it's set to 60. The starts on this machine are crisp and part of the reason for that is that it has a hot start feature, which means it gives a short burst of a higher amperage to get everything going. And a lot of high-end machines will do this, but often it's pretty difficult to find where to adjust it if you have to manually override that to weld on something really thin. In this case, it's pretty easy. It's just right in the menu and you can change from the automatic setting based on your tungsten size to a manual hot start so you don't burn through on thin material, but you do have to have a tungsten that's in great condition to run it really low. Let's try this out on some thin material here. This is 20 gauge, which is about 35 thousandths of an inch or just under a millimeter. And this is by no means the bottom limit of what this machine is capable of, but what it is is it's the lower limit of what I usually run. Now when I'm running this thin, I'd probably use pulse or uh, if I'm running thinner, for sure I would. But I want to run straight DC just to get a feel for how this machine handles thinner material. And I'm going to run all the way along the joint. And without breaking it up, I mean, that's going to put quite a bit of heat into it. You can see I'm, I'm wobbling a little bit there. But overall, the machine is running really smooth with that DC arc right here. It's around 30 amps. And that lap joint came out really good. You can see the material heated up a little bit with some pulse. Or if I broke that into pieces, it, it would be a little better but it certainly worked well. Now I'm switching over to AC on aluminum, and this is some 20 gauge aluminum, which is right around 30 thousandths of an inch, a little bit thinner than the steel that we ran. And I have it propped up here off the table to run a butt joint that's full penetration. So this is similar to if you were welding like intake charge pipes or things like that. They'd be a little bit thicker than this, but it's the same idea, so we can get a feel for that. And running along here, it's really smooth. I have it set to run a triangle wave at 120 hertz uh, all the way along here. And no problem, I can see it sink down through and it came out pretty smooth on the top and penetrated through on the bottom. So nice and consistent, certainly capable on the machine. Now you can adjust other things on the AC waveform. One of them is the zero crossing current. That's the amperage that you're at when it actually changes between positive and negative. And it needs to be high enough to actually keep your arc lit and maintain it. And auto works most of the time, but if you wanna turn it down manually on some thin delicate stuff, you can fine tune it. Look at this high speed video that I took. On the left, you can see how much more stable the puddle is than on the right. So when you have the lower zero crossing current, it just gives you a little bit more puddle stability. Let's try this out up on the thick side of things. So this is quarter inch thick aluminum, and that's where I think 250 amps is really a sweet spot because you can weld quarter inch without much messing around. You know, I've uh, had a 200 amp machine for many years and it, it can do quarter inch, but it's a struggle. I mean, you're really uh, kind of pushing the end of it, but going off cold here, I can run 250 amps and I'm running with this air-cooled torch and it works great. I've, I've done a little bit of this already to, to try it out, but uh, I'll just show you right here. So I'll start up and it'll take a minute for it to puddle. But once I get my pool in there, I can start feeding filler metal and that is not long for ice cold quarter inch thick aluminum. And I'm running uh, you know, close to full pedal here, 250 amps along here. 
but it, it dabs in just fine and, and it's great to be able to run this thicker quarter inch without a whole lot of hassle. So I'll finish this off and the weld came out really good, but let, let's take a feel on this torch. And I don't wanna to touch that cup for sure, but the torch itself is just warm to the touch. It's really not too hot, which is impressive for running 250 amps AC on an air-cooled torch. So I, I think it's a, it's a good choice that they made with that one. Now right here, you can see the weld came out just, uh, just fine, nice and clean. While we're at it, I'll go ahead and weld the back side, and I can certainly scoot along a little bit faster with that uh, preheat that's left over from the first bead. But uh, either way, the weld came out pretty similar on either side. So certainly capable of running that quarter inch as just a regular uh, job. This is some half inch thick aluminum and with uh, straight argon on this, it would typically be a struggle, but there's a cheat code called mix ACDC on this machine. So when you're running mixed mode ACDC, it just switches between the AC waveform right here positive to negative and it'll do three cycles of that and then it gives a big hit of dc and this can just help push your weld pool down deep and drive some amperage in there you can set the percentage of time that it's on dc up to 30 or 40 percent of straight argon or quite a bit higher with helium now if you are welding this thickness all the time you probably want to look at the invertig 301 or 400 but uh, if you just need to do it occasionally this can get you through Let's try this out on 115 volts. So I'm using the adapter here and I don't have to change anything in the machine. You just plug it in and it senses the voltage automatically. So I'm set to uh, go ahead and run that. Now in this case, I'm on AC still and I'm gonna turn it up to 150 amps and that's the maximum that the machine will go and uh, set up with 120 volts. So I'll go ahead and put a tack weld on each side of some 1 8 inch plate. So 1 8 is going to kind of be your, your thickest aluminum you'll want to do on the regular if you're running on 120 volts. So when I'm running this, it feels just the same as I was on 240 volts. There's really no noticeable performance decline, and I'm able to just cruise right along. This is sped up just a little bit uh, so you don't have to watch the, the whole thing, but uh, in general, no issues there. So if you only have 120 volts in uh, your garage where you're going to be welding, or if you want to use this portable, do some work in different places, that's certainly an option for you if you have the dual voltage version. And it came out uh, just as clean, just as nice as it would on 240 volts. Now something that gets confused a lot is the independent amplitude or asymmetric waveform and the Invertig 221's had this for a long time and I, I use it to usually to reduce my electrode positive. I usually leave it set that direction a little bit. I just want to show a little bit of what that does. So right now this is just a baseline so this is set evenly 100% of the amperage on positive and negative. And notice the frost line, how far in front of the puddle it goes and how far to the sides. Now I'm gonna change only the electrode positive and reduce that a little bit. And what you'll notice is that that frost line is tighter in the front and tighter to the sides. And also it helps to keep the tungsten electrode sharp because it puts a little less heat back into the torch. So you can see that narrower etching band. Now there are other ways you can control this by using a smaller cup and modifying AC balance potentially, but uh, in general you can see the effect that it can have. And I think it's beneficial to leave it at 80 or 90% all the time. So at the end of the day, what do I think about this machine? You know, all that fancy stuff that we talked about, and there's more that we weren't able to cover, is really nice, but but it's it's definitely a favorite machine of mine, if not my favorite uh, TIG welder I've ever used, because it works well and it's simple to use. Having the menu system intuitive, where you can just walk through and set it to what you want without having to think about a bunch of button presses, has a ton of value for me. Also, uh, having the support of HTP, I think, is, is really valuable and just a good quality machine. And you're looking at significant cost savings compared to uh, some of the brands that you'd get through like a welding distributor. So would I recommend this if you're looking for high-end TIG machine? Absolutely. If I wouldn't recommend it, I wouldn't have made this video. I'd just box it up and tell them I'm sending it back. And I've done that many times, never with HTP, but with other companies over the years. I love being able to test out this new equipment and show it to you. If you are looking to pick up one of these or any other HTP products, I do have an affiliate link down in the description that helps support the channel and it makes it possible for me to make these videos. 
I'd never want anyone to buy anything just to use the link, but if you are gonna buy it anyway, I really do appreciate the support. Thanks a ton for tuning in. If you have questions, let me know down in the comments below. And until next time, weld safe and we'll see you then.